and hello today I'm working on a vintage integrated amp it's a Kenwood KA405 from 1979 it's come in for a service well this is actually sent in because it has a channel down but I don't think that's what's wrong normally it's just dodgy pots and switches let's have a look well, this dates back to simpler times where the amps weren't that complicated it's a stereo amp that's the first thing it's got tone controls that's something a little bit different nice big chunky volume control and finally the input there's only three options <laughs> nice Although the tape controls are down here, it does actually have tape inputs and outputs. It's even got pass-through power connections there for convenient wiring. And of course, made in Japan. I'm expecting quality here. And I'm expecting it to use Japanese screws, the industry standard JIS. They're normally marked with a little dot, which these don't have. Phillips are pretty close. Let's go with this one. Well, the inside is nice and tidy. Nice, simple heat sink design. I like this. Easy to clean. Well, I'm not a great fan of wire wrap. Oh, God. That's going to be a nuisance. That's a really pretty transformer. I love all this copper. <laughs> Might polish it. Well, the simple layout here is because I'm using integrated circuits, so no individual transistors. Yeah, I'm sure there are. Oh, wow, these aren't sockets. Huh. Well, it's not the dustiest stamp I've ever seen, but it does have spider webs, and it could be cleaner. <laughs> Let's get the hoover out. Talk it up to the test load. Now speaking of the test load, I have actually been asked about this contraption up here. Let me just tell you a little bit about it. It mainly consists of a heat sink in which there are 800 watt resistors, 8 ohms each. Sits here between 16 and 8 ohms. And here we can actually monitor the output over a little speaker. I've got a fixed minus 40 dB, or I can have a variable output, so I can just adjust how loud it is there. And this upside down speaker is the monitor, where you hear all the sounds come out of there. It also doubles as a handy screwdriver bit storage. <laughs> Very handy. So now that's explained, I guess I should just turn this on. We need to be on the phone input. Well, it's in stereo. About the volume. Mmm, I can't see any trouble. Let's try in the bass. And the treble. Well, the old Nemesis, the balance control. Yeah, that's a favourite. Just check the tuner input now. Oh. Need a bit more amplitude though. Amplitude 200 millivolts. The meters are a little bit out from each other. We'll have to calibrate those. Selector switch is okay. Now the auxiliary input. Perfect. So there's not a lot wrong with this, just needs a front panel service, um, which isn't that straightforward. <laughs> well, start pulling the knobs off, gently. Oh, <laughs> that's not that helpful. Didn't know why I thought it'd be that easy. <laughs> There's more to come off. Little cluster of self tapping screws around here. Let's take the pot out there. So, for this service, I'm going to take off all of these knobs and switches and give them a good old clean. 
and this input selector switch that's going to have to come out but rather horribly this lot have been bending the legs over again oh, I wish they wouldn't do it look at that one it's going to be a pain Try and wrestle these bent pins over. <laughs> it's a bit dodgy. Oh, there's a little green ground wire on here. <laughs> I'm sold that as well. So this volume knob. I need to take this upside down. There's a little screw under there. It's a nice little cutaway in the board. <laughs> Just enough to get the screw in. Not quite straight, but straight enough. The same here. See for the tape monitor board. Well, the switches for the tape monitor. Let's get these off as well. Try not to burn my fingers. Bit of a fight that was. <laughs> yeah, I think the nozzle's blocked. Oh, yeah, that's pretty rammy. That's better. Should work better now. So these are all getting a trip to the ultrasonic cleaner. Lucky them. Whilst I'm waiting for those, I want to check the capacitors on this. They might be bad, you don't know. On this tone control board, for example, we've got some 10 mic caps, some 0.22 mic caps, and 47 mic caps. They're not going to have a hard time in this circuit, but I will check them out. And this is a homemade tool I made all oh, decades ago. This is an ESR meter, that's equivalent series resistance. This puts a 100 kilohertz sine wave out onto the test lead and basically measures its resistance, or rather impedance. Get under there, measure the legs, 0.5 ohms. Hmm. The 0.22 mic caps will have a higher reading, 5 ohms. Doesn't look too bad to me, we'll compare that to the other one. I can just get the probes under there. Pretty much the same, I think they're fine. From the other side of the board now, yeah, 0.5 ohms there, this one, 0.5 ohms. Yeah, the same, 0.5. Check the 47 mics out whilst we're here. Nearly zero. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, these are good. The preamp board's got quite a few caps on there, some fairly chunky ones because that needs a very smooth supply. Very sensitive that circuit. We'll go from the top. Yeah, that one's fine. There's one down there. No one ohm, okay. Hmm. Same circuit here, one ohm the same. Yeah, that's good. We'll come back to those. Then these big ones here. Yeah. Digsy probing. Come on. <laughs> Another cluster of them down there to check. 
Well these are good. Oh yes. That's 4.7 mics there, that's good. And down here, one mic, yeah. Probably okay. Two more chunky ones to check. That one's good. Over here, perfect. Despite the age of them, these actually look okay. I'm going to whip a few out just to make a thorough check, to check they're not leaking, uh, and just measure the capacitance uh, outer circuit. Well, I don't see any signs of corrosion. In fact, these are nicely potted. Look at that, it's like an epoxy potting. Just going to connect the Kelvin clips to this capacitor, see what she measures. I'll be honest, that's within spec. Plus or minus 10%. I think you'll find brand new caps aren't much better. And to prove the point, let's connect up a nice new one. There you go. <laughs> it's actually worse. Now we can have a look at the main board. This can just wrestle out like this. And this is where the main power supply side. These are where the input rectifiers in the bridge formation. These main filter caps must be for a positive and negative rail. These are seven and a half thousand microfarads each, 50 volts. And just lurking there is, I think, the speaker protection relay. Probably driven by this little IC here. And in between the heat sinks, we can see two variable resistors down here. These aren't for bias adjustment. These are actually for setting the power meters on the front. I have noticed the bias trimmers are missing. They've been replaced with fixed resistors. You can't adjust the bias current on this. And absolutely, it's the same story from the other side, VR1, <laughs> replace the resistor. And this is the other side of the main board. This will be where the signal's coming, I'd imagine. You've got the left and the right channels. And all these transistors will be responsible for driving the main power transistors. And this would be a 2SA1105, which is married up with a 2SC2580. These things are rated for 9 amps of current apiece. Let's check these in the same way. Yeah, this is reading perfectly. There's one there. Oh, good. That's good. Got another one here. Yeah. And that one's fine. Over here. Yeah. Also good. Fine. And these two in the centre live in between the heat sinks. Oh, they could be better. That's not brilliant. These are 2.2 microfarads each. They should be measuring better than that, really. Yeah, these ones I'm going to replace. difficult to get your hands in here. Let's compare these ones. Look at that. Much better. Now these main DC filter caps are wedged in under the heatsink and they're glued down as well. I'm going to take these out if I don't need to. I'm going to measure these in circuit with the LCR meter. Not the right thing really, but give me an idea of the capacitance on here. here we've got 10,000 microfarads of capacitance on the negative rail. That's quite good. And on the positive rail... <laughs> Typical. I hope there's enough charge in this to charge this capacitor up. <laughs> and there is. 9,600 microfarads. Yeah, I think these are fine. I'm not going to take them out. And the last little cluster down here. There's one there. Good. There's one there. There's one there. What else is there? Here. Good. And this rail here was actually there. Same place. I think now it's time to start the rebuild. Let's we'll slot this in, get the heat sink lined up. Let's get these engaged on these slots. There we go. These are actually bent over. Interesting construction. I better fetch the pots and switches out of the oven.
Oh, they're not too hot. I can handle that. Now the ultrasonic cleaner does a great job getting rid of all the tarnishing and all the crud off these. These have, have great conductivity and work really well. Apart from they could do with a bit of lubrication. Because it would have washed all of that out. I'm going to use this deoxy just as a lubricant really. I think it works quite well. Just work it in. I'll lay them all on a paper towel because they'll be a little bit <laughs> dribbly. Now this speaker switch needs a little bit more lubrication. It's got a bit of a mechanism here. Got a little balling dent there and a little gear. I'm just going to give that some grease. It needs a bit more than just a bit of oil. And then the contacts, I shall give it a similar little flush. Now these are a little harder to get into because they're all enclosed but you can get to it just down there. And finally this one, this is the input selector switch. We'll work out how to get in this and where the contacts are. I'm thinking it's through this hole you can see the contact block there. Knock it back there. I hold it vertically, just shove a load of this in. Then hopefully it'll work its way through. I should decide to take these grounding rings off because they're going to be in the way whilst I'm trying to put these back. I didn't desolder them before because the pins are too big for the desoldering tool. Start with the base control pot, then the treble, And these switches. Let's put the case solder points in first because um, they take longer. Big chunks of metal to warm up they are. And now the troublesome balance pot. A oh, little note to self, <laughs> next time you do this, put these on first. Would have been easier.
the volume control goes on here. Get this switch in, and this one And finally the selector switch. If you're glad when this is in, something rewarding about putting the last part in. That flux looks a bit messy. <laughs> we'll just clean that off. Let's fasten some of these boards back down screw to engage. Let's try and wrestle the front panel back on. I'm expecting a bit of a fight here. <laughs> Can't see any of the pots lining up yet. Try and get the volume knob back in. There we go. Let's get these nuts on there. Oh, <laughs> they're difficult to thread on. Why? Why are they difficult? That's better. This face should use a bit of a clean, isn't it? <laughs> a few splatters. This screen printing's of a better quality, nothing <laughs> wiping off. Let's turn these down all the way so I know where they've got to go. But it's looking good, just check the calibration. I'm putting one channel into the audio analyzer. Which one is it? Yeah, it's the left channel. And we're just displaying the voltage there, AC voltage. I'm going to set that onto power so that's a special 19.0. So that's the power into 8 ohms. If I set that to something convenient like 10 watts, pretty close. See what the meter says. And the meters are calibrated to these little tensiometers on the board. Ten watts a piece, that's how I like it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Twenty-three watts, look at the distortion. That's not bad at all. I think that's pretty good. See if it's still got 50 watts in it. Oh yes. Beautiful. Flat top there, 76 watts. Wow. 
I reckon this amp's as good as the day it was new. <laughs> really impressed. I'm going to check the tone controls. I'm going to stick some square waves in this. Let's test the bass response. Reduced. Yeah. Increased. Perfect. Treble. Yeah, that's what we expect to see. Let's throw these off. Bit of bass, bit of treble. Direct. Perfect. Loudness. Yeah. And the balance. Yeah. Let's check the tuner input. Should work. And it does work. That's the tape input. Perfect. And tape B. Great. Then another test of the phono input. Last thing I'm checking. Well that's a beautiful amp, it looks great and it performs perfectly. It's absolutely bang on spec. <laughs> well there's nothing more to do with it. Take my test leads off. And put the lid on. What a stunning little amp. I'm very happy with this. Well, I should imagine the owner's going to be very happy with this. <laughs> Catch you next time. And just in case you thought I'd forgot about Channel B, here it is.